Tiderida brasiliensis, the Mexican free-tailed bat. Populations throughout the southwestern United States spend much of the winter in Mexico. Males begin returning to the U.S. as early as mid-January, and most females arrive in April. Mating takes place in roosts that later serve as maternity colonies, where young are born from mid-June to mid-July. The largest colonies form in caves. Smaller colonies inhabit bridges and buildings. Amanda Lawler and Barbara French maintain captive colonies of Mexican free-tailed bats. The Lawler colony resides at the Bat World Sanctuary in Mineral Wells, Texas, and the French colony at the home of Barbara French in Austin, Texas. Bats in both colonies are not releasable due to various injuries. Both facilities have large flight areas and bat roosts are located in protected buildings. The colonies have varied in size over time from approximately 25 to 75 bats, and individuals are identified and distinguished from one another by specific injuries. At the Bat World facility, bats roost in a cave-shaped cage. Rock-shaped roosts inside the cave have plastic netting on the back and are padded with soft fabric. Inside, you can see bats roosting in one of the rocks. At the French facility, bats roost in wooden cages in fabric pouches. Because activity takes place in darkened areas of cages, bat behavior was filmed with near-infrared lighting. Observations of these colonies over the past decade have given us the opportunity to document mating and vocalization activity. Tashan Ma from the Institute of Neurosciences recorded the calls using a time expansion digitizer. Any time from November through January, dominant males in these colonies move from communal roosting areas to unoccupied pouches or rocks and begin rubbing the guler gland on their throat on the pouch and surrounding cage walls. Adding drops of urine to the area, they mix their own special scent. Males take on a particularly pungent odor at this time. After marking these territories, Males expressively flap their wings and emit territorial buzzes to announce mating areas and attract females. Each male has his own version of this song-like call. Slowed eight times, the call sounds like this. Females sometimes respond to these calls with a quiet series of buzzes called female response calls. Here Katia, a female, approaches Newt's pouch. She waits quietly in a submissive posture until he allows her entrance. Female response calls range from 15 to 30 kilohertz. Here Kent pushes his muzzle into a female's back and emits a dominance goal before allowing her entrance into his territory. She replies with a female response call. The dominance goal ranges from 1 to 35 kilohertz. Males attempt to attract as many females as possible to their established territories. Once a group of females have gathered inside, the male emits a herding buzz as he pushes his muzzle into the females' bodies, herding them into a tight cluster. Here Benson herds a group of females into a cluster and then begins marking the roost again. The herding buzz ranges from 18 to 33 kilohertz. 
Males frequently mark their territories with their throat gland, often emitting a song-like marking call as they do so. Marking calls range from 5 to 6 kilohertz. Males occasionally emit the same call without marking when females are in their territory as seen here. There are some reproductively active males that do not mark territories and some that do mark territories but that are not successful in attracting females. These males often move to the perimeter of the cage, aggressively pouncing on females that happen by, biting onto the female's ear and emitting herding buzzes as they attempt to position her for mating. Females do not generally resist mating attempts by males in established territories, but do attempt to resist advances from the non-territorial males, as seen here. Cadia resists unwelcome advances from the non-territorial male on the left. He emits the herding buzz and she responds with protest squeals ranging from 1 to 57 kilohertz. Males defend territories emitting buzzes and warning calls. Much of their defense is simple posturing and takes place at territorial boundaries where males confront one another with open mouths, baring their teeth, bobbing their heads, and touching noses. Here Guanito and Boris face off. Watch as Guanito, the bat on the left, uses his left wing to box Boris in the head. Warning calls range from 16 to 26 kilohertz. Females generally roost with dominant males from four days to a week and then move on to roost with another dominant male, although some females roost with the same male during the entire mating season. Occasionally, territorial disputes lapse into more aggressive exchanges as males actually lock jaws, emitting high-pitched screeches as they roll around until one chases the other off. Here, the bat in the pouch on the right has several females inside. An envious Guanito, the bat on the left, brazenly enters and attempts to take over the other male's pouch. After a brief but intense struggle, he is chased away. When disturbed in the roost prior to feeding time, the bats in these colonies often emit questioning calls, sometimes approaching the intruder. Questioning calls range from 20 to 54 kilohertz. As evening and feeding time approaches, bats emit anticipation clicks, a mechanical sound produced perhaps by clearing the throat or nose as in a sneeze. This sound ranges from 2 to 22 kilohertz.
Although some of the bats in these colonies self-feed on mealworms, many are hand-fed blended mealworm mixtures and beg for the blended food by emitting food solicitation buzzes. These buzzes range from 20 to 48 kilohertz. After bats have eaten their fill, they groom and rest quietly. Sometimes a quiet chittering can be heard as a bat rubs its muzzle gently against another bat as seen here and here again. This period of rest ends as bats become active again just prior to dawn. They buzz and chatter and feed from trays of mealworms. Those that are able to fly, fly around the building, always returning to their roost by morning. Back in the roost, bats make exaggerated chittering sounds as they hop towards one another in a play-like gesture. Exaggerated chittering calls range from 7 to 35 kilohertz. Scuffles over roosting places sometimes include irritation buzzes as bats butt heads. Irritation buzzes range from 18 to 60 kilohertz. This second bout of feeding activity and socializing is followed by another period of rest as many bats roost communally. By dawn, bats disperse to various roosts in the cage, often pushing their way into a group of bats, kicking their little feet, and squabbling loudly over favored roosting positions. Squabbles range from 8 to 48 kilohertz. If sufficiently disturbed, bats abandon the roost emitting escape cries. Escape cries range from 17 to 38 kilohertz. When threatened by something other than another bat, bats sometimes straighten their elbows and raise up on their wrists, sparing their teeth and jerking their bodies in defense as they emit an alarm call. The alarm call ranges from 9 to 47 kilohertz. From the day of its birth, a pup hears its mother's distinctive directive call. Each mother has her own unique call. Here Annie calls to her pup Oscar, who nurses. Directive calls vary from 8 to 47 kilohertz. Pups emit isolation calls. Each pup has a distinct call and only emits the call when its stomach is empty. Isolation calls therefore appear to function as attempts to solicit food. Here Oscar calls into his mother's ear. Isolation calls vary from 12 to 40 kilohertz. During episodes of rapid wing flapping, young pups emit a pre-flight call ranging from 12 to 29 kilohertz. The Batworld Wild Sanctuary is a sandstone building that is home to a growing colony of up to 30,000 free-tailed bats. Mating was first observed in the wild in this building. Males begin returning to the building by mid-January, and most females arrive in April. The bats roost in the crawl space at the top of the building. Bats squabble and butt heads as they emit irritation buzzes in the roost. 
watch the two bats in the center butting heads. Just prior to flying out to feed at night, they can be heard emitting anticipation clicks. Here, a bat roosts in a crevice and pokes its head out in response to the light from a flashlight. Although they do not appear to respond to infrared light, they definitely respond to other types of lighting. Each time the flashlight is turned on, the bat pops its head out to investigate and emits a questioning call. After females arrive in April, armorous males can be heard emitting territorial buzzes and the very low frequency marking calls, and they can be observed marking roosting surfaces. Watch the bat in the center as he marks the roost with his throat gland. By June, many females segregate from the main colony and form a small maternity colony in another section of the building. Babies are born and raised here, and both the directive calls of mothers and the isolation calls of their pups can be heard in the roost. In August, there is a dramatic increase in colony size as bats gather at the site for migration. This building appears to serve as a stopover site for migrating bats. Bats can be observed swarming inside and outside of the building at dusk and again in reduced numbers at dawn. This swarming activity has also been observed at a maternity colony in central Texas. Perhaps this activity serves as a sort of pre-migratory orientation for the young born that year. How can the information we've learned from our captive colonies be helpful when observing large colonies in the wild, where we hear the incessant chatter of thousands or even millions of bats? We observed mating in Bracken Cave in central Texas, home to over 20 million bats, and still we were able to distinguish a mother's directive call. We detected many of the same calls recorded from our captive colonies at these wild roosts. It is our hope that the observations described in this film will assist researchers as they work to understand the social structure of these colonies, allowing us to become more effective in our efforts to protect this ecologically significant migratory species.